Okay, now we are on to the H12 block, and this block is appliqued onto one big giant square. So I have my big giant square right here that came in my paper pieces, and my four hearts, and there's only five pieces to this block, which is kind of cool. So I've taken a ruler, and I've made it a light line, and I could have gone all the way through, but because this is empty in the middle here, there's no point. So I just want to make sure that I've got a, a mark to put my hearts on so because they're going to end up touching each other on the sides. The heart shapes on this block are a little different than the shapes that are in the book. If you look at the H7 to H13 bag sort video, it'll show you the difference and it's just because of the math needed to make the paper pieces versus the math needed to make the book. Um, you're going to get the same same look though. So I'm going to base these hearts, and I'm going to take, I'm going to make a cut almost, almost all the way down to this and in the, into the cleavage of the heart. And then I'm going to gathering stitch all the way around. I'll go this way because I'm right handed. And then I will then fold it over and tack it down all the way back with my, um, with my gathering stitch basting thing that I'll do. And then I'll position them on here with my stapler and applique them down. So this is my heart. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to nip down to just shy of that piece. And then that way I've got a place to fold it over and do my gathering stitch. So I'm going to do that on all four of my hearts. So I'm going to gathering stitch my heart and I want to come up from the front so that my knot is on the front. So that's where my fabric is going to end up. So I'm going to come up right about there. But I'm going to move my fabric. So I'm going to come up there and then I'm going to start with the gathering stitch. I like to start on the edge. I don't want to have I don't want to be on the edge so that it frays the fabric, but I don't want to be close so that I want to be able to have fabric to stitch on my seam. So I am going to do a stitch all the way around the heart so that I can smoothly pull it um, around the shape. This gives it a better, smoother curve without having all those little chunky bumps. So I will do this around all the way around my heart. So I've gone around my heart with my gathering stitch and so now I have to pull it tight and I can pull and it will come this tight this part but what I will do for this side is I try to find a stitch here without getting the fabric and I'll pull with my stiletto and then make that tight and I'll put my thumb here to keep the tension and then I'll take I'll pull it my stiletto okay and then I'll take this thread and pull the rest of this through so I get some tension here and then I have to come and pull this tight okay so I'm gonna pull this tight and I'm gonna hold this here and I'm going to pull, I'm going to stick this through to the other side. Okay, and then I'll take, I take my stiletto and I'm going to pull. Now I don't want to fray this here, but I'm pulling so the tension comes from here. So I will then pull this, stitch this through. And then I keep pulling as I go around so that I get a tight edge because this tight edge is what I want to stitch down on my applique. So I just keep going around in big basting stitches around my heart. Okay, so I've worked around to my curve here and I'm pulling this down to make sure that this is nice and tight as I go. 
And then, so actually I'm going to hold this back here and I'm going to stitch, oops, sorry. And sometimes I'll pull with my needle, but I don't want to bend my needle because my needle is um, a number 11 applique needle and it's not got the strength of a stiletto. So I don't really want to be pulling with my needle. And the needle's sharper, so it might it might tear the fabric or, you know, snag or whatever you want to do. So I'm going to work my way around this point and back to here. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and I've pulled my fabric tight and stitched it down. And you want to be real careful when you get to this point. This is where the fabric is, is raw edged and I'm pulling, but I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch and I'm because this is this will come apart. It's okay that this is loose for now because you'll stitch that in and, and strengthen that up later, but just be real careful with it right now. So I'm going to pull my thread through and then I'm going to make sure that I keep this tight. I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to tie this off with a knot. I'm going to make sure they don't go through the fabric, although it's not the end of the world. But I want both of my knots to be on top so that when I go to take my basting out, it doesn't take it. I don't have to take the papers out to take my basting out. And that's why you want to have this because once you applique this down to the block, you can't take the big giant paper out of the block until you've put it into the quilt completely. So I'm going to leave this like that. And that way I can applique and we will handle this cleavage section of the heart when we go to applique it down to the block. So I got my hearts done and I'm ready to put them on my background. What I did is I have these that are marked across the diagonal, one here and one here, but what I also needed to do was find the middle of this side. And I put a light pencil line here, right in the middle, it's two and a, half, two and a quarter inches on a four and a half block. So what's gonna happen here is I'm going to line up my heart the, the cleavage on the center line and then once I have that I'm going to move it to make sure that the just the edge of it as I look straight down on it touches this this pencil line so if I do this and I look down at it it touches this pencil line but it's gotten off center here so I move this up and I should be able to get it so that it's lined up with all three lines the best I can. I'm not going to worry about, there's no other hearts on here right now, but I'm not going to worry about that right now anyway, because in theory, if I do this right, they should all work out. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to grab my stapler. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the one on around the 90 degrees do the same thing. Line it up on the middle, make it touch pencil line, and make sure that it's, now it should touch in one spot right where the pencil line is, because that's the whole design point. So it's touching there, it's centered here, and it's touching here. Might move this down just a little bit. Oh, no, it was fine where it was. I'll move this. We've got this, and it's not smushed. It's not like crammed up on there. It's just touching. So I'm going to grab this with my stapler again. And I'm going to work my way around. So number three centered, touch, touch. And then, yep. So this is, this is working out really well because I already have all my marks on here. Okay, and then the fourth one should be good to go in theory. So let's line up the center and see where we are in the hearts. This one's a little high. There we go. 
Okay, so this one's a little off. So I'm going to staple this one. And then what I can do is I got a couple options. I'm going to actually remove my staple and adjust this heart because if you look, I've got a little bit, it's a little off here, and so that's why it's not touching here. So I'm going to remove my staple and readjust. All right, so I've taken my staple out and I'm lining this back up, and so this is touching and this is touching. Now it doesn't have to be, I didn't really have to take it out. It's just got to be so that it touches and it looks like it's lined up. Okay, so I'm going to staple this. Okay, so now I've got all my my heart stapled on here. And you can see that, you know, once this sits down, it'll be good to go. So this way I'm going to be able to applique my hearts. And the tricky part is going to be right here because it's so thin next to the seam. All right, so now I'm to this sensitive spot here. And what I gotta do is I gotta tuck this, all this excess in here and snug it right up on the paper. But you gotta be real careful not to fray it. And so then I'm gonna stitch right up to it and then reinforce that stitch. And then go across and do a reinforced stitch after I've pushed this in. So let me get this get this down up to that point and it's going to pull up as I approach it so I'm going to get it so it's about right there and pull my needle through and then you gotta, be real, you gotta be real careful because it pulls out the fabric. So now I'm gonna. And this is I, this is the part I love my stiletto for. Okay, so I'm gonna gradually work this in and get as much as it can safely under there, and then stitch back to the same spot. Or a little bit behind it. And I'm going to sit in the same spot again. Oops. That happens a lot. Okay. So I've got this little thread sticking out. All right. So I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to cross to the other side and go to right about there and then I'm going to stitch and then I'm going to stitch again and my clock's going to go off because it's 9 p.m. Okay, and then I'm going to work my way back around. All right, so I've done my double stitch, and I've gone to my next stitch here. And now when I, oops, my stitch got stuck on my, got stuck on my pieces. Okay. Now this isn't that tidy, but once the papers come out and it's in the quilt, I need to make sure that I quilt it right next to it so I can reinforce this best I can. So I'm going to echo quilt this right around here. And the other option you could do is you can machine applique this. And with English paper piecing, it's all 100% handwork. But if you wanted to reinforce this, if you're not happy with this later, you can reinforce this with machine stitching. I'm going to I reinforce this with quilting when I go to quilt this. But it's not pretty and I may not be doing it the right way honestly but this is the way I do it and hey if it's not right then I would appreciate knowing that and you can put comments on my video 
Before I put all of my appliques down, I'm going to erase my pencil lines. And maybe pencil wasn't the best way to go. I probably should have used chalk. But I'm going to take my eraser and just lightly erase as I go. Um, I normally will use a white eraser because it doesn't leave marks behind. But 90 for 95 percent of the time I've done this, I haven't had a problem. Apparently, this might be five percent. But I like to do this before I do this because then I could get in here and, and erase my marks while I before I have my applique before I have my applique done. So I'll go around and then I'll wipe off my little residue and I'll go around and get rid of my marks before I get my appliques done. When I appliqued this down, it shifted. So and I know this because I got and I haven't finished erasing it. I got this is a little closer than this. And this is the other one I applied down. So it's shifted a bit. And I believe that's because I only used one staple. And I'm looking at these, and sure enough, they can shift quite a bit. So I'm going to staple each side. I'm going to realign these and make sure that they're lined up right. And I'm going to staple each side down. Because if these shift, these can be off completely. I'm not, I, can, I can fix these if I wanted to. I'm not going to. But I could fix these if it really, really bothered me. But because they're still touching, and my black will look just fine at the end. So perfect is sometimes not as good as done. So I'm going to, but I am going to staple each side of these after I reposition to make sure they're touching and finish these other two. Okay, so now I've got all of my hearts stitched down, and I'm going to take out my basting. So I'm going to clip on either side of this knot and then pull the knot out, this knot. I'm going to take that knot away, and then I'm going to pick out each one of these, carefully not to, not to snag the fabric. So as I do this, that knot can go away. So I'm going to carefully do each one of these. all the way all the way around the heart and then once I get done with these now this one's a tiny tiny one but I gotta pull it out and then okay so I got all my stitches out except I got this knot and this was my original knot and this is why you start it on the top is because then you pull the knot you pull the string and then all of that basting comes out the back without having to remove your papers at all. So I will remove my stitching from the other two. But other than taking my basting out, I have a completed block for H12.